$20, $40 and $400. Welcome in soldering iron comparison video. If you are into electronics, you probably already have a soldering iron and if you are just starting, you will need one soon. So in this video, I will compare three different soldering irons. Why those three? This one is small and inexpensive. This is the cheapest, probably the cheapest soldering station that I found online. And this is just a crazy expensive soldering station that I won in a contest organized by Arduino, Destroyac and Huckster. Thank you very much. I really want to see if there is any difference in soldering with $40 soldering iron and $400 soldering iron. Let's start with the cheapest one. I mean, you still can find some cheaper options, but I don't recommend buying a soldering iron without temperature control, because you would end up with all the burnt components. Huge advantage of this soldering iron is size. It's small and portable. It's also nice that this is all in one solution, so there is no additional control box, like the other soldering stations that I have. Let's heat it up and see what we can solder with it. I thought that this soldering iron will be a complete garbage, but it turns out that it's not. It sounds too good to be true, you know, $20, temperature control, small, portable and everything, but it works really well. It's small, it's light, this rubber thing under your fingers give you a really nice grip. I soldered some THT components and SMD components without any problem. I'm surprised, it works fine. The only thing I would complain about is this safety rest. I mean, your soldering iron for sure can rest, but it's not safe, really not safe at all. And now let's test the first soldering station. The main difference between soldering station and soldering iron is that the soldering iron is connected to this control box and all of the electronics is inside this thing so the soldering iron itself is smaller and lighter, so it's easier to solder with it. Generally, a soldering station is a way more professional way to go, so maybe save some more and buy a soldering station instead of soldering iron. Let's turn it on and heat it up. There is a switch on the side, and temperature can be controlled with this knob, and this LED indicates if this is heated up. I will set it to 300 degrees and I will solder some SMD and THT components. There is a small difference, a really small one, not a big one. The soldering iron is slightly smaller and lighter, it feels better in hand and also the temperature is easier to control thanks to this knob. Also the safety rest right now is safe, but the thing that holds your soldering iron is made out of plastic. I tried to melt it, it's a proper kind of plastic so it's hard to melt, but it's too plastic so keep that in mind. Overall, for this price, this is a really decent soldering station, so if you are looking for one, check out the link in the description. And now, time for the most expensive soldering station that I've ever touched. $400 WT1010, made by Weller.
The very first thing that I noticed is design. This thing looks really cool. It's colorful and also the materials used to build it are higher quality, you just feel it. I mean, I know it has nothing to do with how it's soldered, I just wanted to point out that this really looks nice. The soldering iron is really small, it's the smallest soldering iron that I've ever saw. And also this station is really powerful because it's rated as 19 watts and I think this time we can trust the manufacturer, you know, that's Weller. They produce one of the best soldering irons in the world. So let's turn it on, heat it up and solder some stuff. I don't really see a big difference between the soldering irons. Sure, there are small things like this thing is super small, it feels good in hand. This cable is more flexible than the other cables. The quality of this is way better. It will last longer than the Chinese products. But if you are not going to solder every day for the next few years, then I see no point in buying such expensive soldering iron. Of course, there are some other cool features like a special port that you can connect accessories to, the accelerometer inside soldering iron so that there is a standby feature, automatic standby feature. And this is an industrial grade soldering iron, so people use it in the factories to solder every single day for a few hours. But for us, the hobbyists, I think it's not that useful, especially compared to the price. I feel like this is not a really good end of this test, so I have an idea. I will give those free soldering irons to my dad and few components to solder and I will ask him what he thinks about them. My dad used to solder a lot back when he was my age, right now he's not soldering that much, but he knows how to solder so maybe he will sense any difference between those free soldering irons. So let me give those free soldering irons to my dad and ask him what he thinks about them. Dla mnie porównywalna jest ta i ta i tą mi się dobrze robiło i tą, natomiast tą słabą. The last test that I want to do is to measure the heating up time of each soldering iron. So to conclude this video, if you are looking for a portable and inexpensive solution, here is a way to go. If you want slightly more professional tool, a soldering station that is still quite inexpensive, here it is. And if you want a super professional, high quality product with a lot of features, you have to spend $400. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and if you have any questions leave them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, happy making, bye!